de balaba son de le de rasole bi de baka pala ba diante le de kalaba diante le de de balaba soli ande de oh we exalt you oh god di anta la ba soli ada raso feli bi de balaba son de le de rasole bi de balaba kon de 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 balaba soli ande de de let praise and adoration rise from your inside unto the king of kings because he deserves it libalo shele bi de balaba diante le de he alone is worthy of our praise ele baron de de basalada kapala ba di vili balaba soli ande le de rasole bi de balaba kapai li bi de balaba sonde malaba di kapai li branto li bi de balaba da shele bi de balaba sonde le de kapala ba di vili balaba soli ande le de o malivi di ba kapai ele bi di vili a crown that you feel and we say that you reign oh god libra soli bi di ande le de makapala ba di vili balaba soli ande le de kapai li bi di balaba soli ande le de kapraso feli bi di balaba soli ande le de raseli bi di balaba kapali bi di balaba soli ande le de kapai meli bi di balaba soli bi di balaba kapali branto meli bi di balaba soli bi di adore him in this place adore him in this place lift up your voice lift up your voice libra soli bi di balaba kapai resso feli bi di balaba soli ande le de make melodies in your heart unto the king because he deserves it li bi di balaba soli he is a lord strong and mighty libra soli bi di balaba kapai li bi di balaba sonde le de Rasoli mini malaba kom de le balai Raseli mini malaba soli yam de le de Kapala bali mini malaba solo Raseli mini kapam de le de This morning we worship him in the beauty of his holiness Ni kapali mini malaba soli yam de le de Himalaga bandos Into the wisdom Before time began You called us into and you made a plan that we live and move and have all our being in thee in thee into the wisdom before time began you called us into and you made a plan that we live and move and have all our being in thee in thee ah
Hosanna in the Speak in the spirit, even as you prepare your heart for the word of God. Lekom breba baba bo sanda bramba ba la kande da baka sai atia la kanda bramba ba kose in the name of Jesus thank you lord father we are grateful this morning we thank you for grace we thank you for strength we thank you for your awesome presence that is with us this morning we just want to thank you for everything you've done in our lives we thank you for the gift of life we thank you for what we're saying today. This morning, we are grateful. We pray that even as your word is coming with great power and mind, we pray that, Father, you speak to your people. We pray for mercy, we pray for strength, and we pray for grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take your seats. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God this morning for our lives. And it's a blessing to see such a day because I, I believe that life is, is the greatest gift you can ever receive. If you have life, you have everything. So if God gives you life, it means that you are life indeed. Amen. Amen. Because with life, you can receive any other thing. Your, even your, your aspirations will come to pass if you have life. Amen. But without life, there's no way any other thing can be added. Hallelujah. So the greatest gift you can ever receive from God is life. So it's good we put away some of the worries. This morning we dealt with worry, anxiety, things that, that, that can baffle your mind, that can weigh you down, that can pull you down. People can think and forget about the fact that tomorrow they can be alive. Hallelujah. That is, that is the intensity of people's worry. Hallelujah. And I believe that with life, all things are possible. Amen. We thank God this morning. Um, our Father is not here with us this morning. Hallelujah. And we pray that the Lord will help him wherever he is. Amen. We pray that the Lord will favor his cause. Amen. And I've been, I've been talking about how he has been a blessing to us. Some of us, we have a testimony. Amen. If we look at um, where we hail from, where we're coming from, the, the journey we've made so far by the grace that God invested in our Father, the Apostle, is a blessing to us. Amen. And I believe you're also testifying how God is using him. I, I spoke with one person. He said that they are praying that Daddy, Daddy will come and reside in the UK. I said, I cancel that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Daddy will not go and recite the amen. He can go and come. It's allowed. If not, I'll organize some prayer. I'll consult Pastor Collins and we'll do some prayer against him that he will be here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God 
Our mother is around, amen. Daddy is not here, but mommy is here, amen. So we are blessed. Once mommy is here, daddy is around, hallelujah. Do you believe that? Yes, yes I, I love her so much. And she has been a blessing. You know, because of the way I do my things, sometimes I do things without even planning. And for instance, anytime there's an occasion or there's, there's, there's a program, uh, you'll be there, mommy will call you. <laughs> say, Bishop, have you done this? Have you, have you sat and drawn a program regarding like systematic program outline? Yeah, yeah mommy, I, 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 I'm yet to say yes, do it. Uh, that's, 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 that's the kind of blessing sh she has been to me, amen. She will help you to order things. It's not like, oh, everything is in my head, no. It doesn't work that way. He will prompt you that, do this, do that, and it's a blessing. Uh, we are learning and helping us, amen. Mommy, God bless you for what you do to help our lives, amen. So, this morning, straight away, we will move into the word. I've been instructed by Daddy to do a recap on the things that we've studied so far. Um, it's a blessing to go back and look at the things we've studied. If, if you look at the things we are being taught, our daddy is a teacher. And so the things he teaches us, if you do not sit, there's no way you'll be able to get them in full context. You will never understand them. It needs sitting. You have to be disciplined. You have to sit down before you'll be able to understand the things that he has been teaching us. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing, right? And not just one hearing. Hearing and hearing. So it's good you revisit. It's good you recapture. You go back to things you've learned. And this will generate faith in our hearts. Amen. So um, we've been looking at, for the past weeks, we've been looking at the character foundation needed for ministry. The character foundation needed for ministry. And as simple as it is, so far we've used over a month to, to deal with this topic. And, and that's how intensified the, that, 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 that's the intensity of, of the team. Very deep, very, it entails a lot. Amen. So we are going back to the things that we've learned. And that is the character foundation needed for ministry. Character foundation needed for ministry. And under the character foundation needed for ministry... That they spoke about the foundation of knowledge. The foundation of no knowledge and the foundation of character and also foundation of leadership. These, these three things, if you are aspiring to, to have a good ministry, a ministry means service in any venture, in anything that you are doing, it could be even marriage, it could be your business. Anything that you are doing uh, as, as, as a ministry, you must have these foundations. Because without foundations, there's no way what you are building will stand. It takes foundations for the things we build to stand. So the Bible says that if the foundations be destroyed, what would the righteous do? So everything springs from a foundation. If your life doesn't have a foundation... You, you will see that you will live your life any way, anyhow. So foundations are very important. And he spoke about character. If, if we say character, character can, can be your makeups, your constituents, the things that makes you, the, 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 the ideas you've built over the years, the things you've come to imbibe. Many people have different beliefs. If you ask them, they will tell you, well, this is what I was exposed to. So the things you are exposed to will come together and form your character. So many people are of different character, but this morning we are looking at character, character foundation needed for ministry. Needed for ministry. Every ministry, it can apply to every ministry. Everything you are doing, this can, 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 can be applied. Because, for instance, if you are doing business, let's say you are doing business, and that business you are doing, you don't have measures. Everything goes. You don't have even time that you start work. You can open your shop anytime that, that convenience you. So, for instance, you can be in your house. People will be calling you. Are you not coming to shop this morning? 
you will see that you don't have a systematic, structured, well-organized way of doing your things. So you can see that you don't have structures in place executing your, your venture. Hallelujah. Yes, so under the foundation of knowledge that he talked about knowledge of the word. The knowledge of the word. He also talked about the knowledge of God and the knowledge of yourself. And the last one was the knowledge of the devil. It's good we know our doctrine. Talking about knowledge of the word. It's good you know your doctrine. If you do not know your doctrine, if you don't know your doctrine, you will see that you will be haphazard. You will be unturned. Any little wind can blow you away from the faith. So as a believer, that you want to build a formidable ministry, a formidable lifestyle with God, you must know the word of God. You must have a foundation of the word of God. Many people easily slip off because they have issue with the word of God. They are not rich when it comes to the word. And so every pet doctrine, every pet doctrine can easily take them off track. So somebody can say, oh, I, I used to be a pastor. I used to be a Christian, but yet recently I got to know that they've been lying to us. It's, it's a sign that this person did not take his time to be rooted in the doctrines that he claims he believes. And so it's a big deal when it comes to doctrines, when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to the word of God. So he, he has taken his time to teach. So I'm just doing a recap. He took his time to take us through the knowledge of the word and the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. People are confused. There, there are so many confusions because people have things they listen to. The social media, there's a message that the social media is trying to bring on board. And so people don't have the word of God in their heart. And so they can just go to face media, uh, uh, Facebook and any information there, they will, just, they will just absorb it. And because of that, people don't even know the thing they believed. They don't have any knowledge about God. It's good as a believer aiming to build a formidable ministry or a character foundation needed for ministry, you know all these things. Your knowledge base must be and widened. Then he came to knowledge of yourself. Knowledge of yourself. One, one thing that I believe we should take note of is knowledge of ourselves. Because if you don't know who you are, you can easily miss it in life. For instance, let's say you, you, you are born again now. You are a new creation. And you have all things at your disposal according to Ephesians 3, 1 coming. That we have been blessed at 1 verse 3 coming. We have been blessed with every heavenly gift. That we have everything at, at our disposal. But a believer can be a casualty. You can be a deficient of knowledge if you do not know who you are. The devil will use you. you. You can be turned into anything if you don't know who you are. So it's good we have knowledge about ourselves. And the last one he spoke about was the knowledge of the devil. Very important. Knowledge of the devil. Many people also believe that the devil is so powerful in such a way that believers, we are the mercy of the devil. Have you met someone like my sister, for instance? Anytime she, she, she'll get a dream. And let's say that dream is, is a projection from the devil. He will, he will project the dream in such a way, trying to tell you that the devil has done the thing, so we are dead. You see, this, this is a thwarted knowledge. It's, it's unturned. It's unturned. There's a knowledge about the devil, but he believes that that knowledge, it has been overblown. It has been explained into excesses. So many people think that believers are trying, our lives are at the mercy of the devil. We are trying to dodge the devil. Don't talk about it. The devil will hear and all that. That people even are afraid to, uh, afraid to pray some prayer topics. That if you say the devil will hear, don't pray it. I spoke with one guy. He said that it's good to speak in tongues. Pastor, you, when, when you start bringing your prayer points, the devil also organizes people for you. 
So let's say we are praying, we are going to win every soul around this community. He said, no, it's not good. Just, just pray in tongues so that he will not hear what you are saying. See, that's, that's a knowledge thwarted. That's an overblown in excesses. A knowledge about devil, but this one is too much. Hallelujah. So it's good we, we have knowledge about the devil. Hallelujah. And now, moving into the foundation of our character. The foundation of character. The foundation of character. This is where we are going to dwell. The foundation of character. The foundation. Let's read Isaiah 40, verse number 3 to 5. Isaiah 40, 3 to 5. Isaiah 43 to 5. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Continue. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And the flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. So, the Lord wants believers to have character. Character. There must be a disposition, a character that we have to display when it comes to fulfilling our ministry. So, as a believer, you cannot say you want to do ministry the way you want it. Because we believe that God is a dominion spirit. And so everything that God would like you to do for him is well structured. To understand that your soul must come in conformity with the things of God before you can do anything for God. You can do nothing when it comes to God unless you do things in God's way. Hallelujah. So mountains are brought low. And that is said that mountains stands for pride and ego. Pride and ego. And so there's a work that must be done when it comes to our character. There's a work that must be done when it comes to our character. Because your character can hinder your progress. When it comes to Christianity, everything is about character. Christianity is about character. The Bible talks about, in Ephesians, the Bible talks about the fact that we are being washed every day by the word. The washing of the word. So, why church? Even church is in place so that our character can be shaping to suit what the master wants us to do. So, with that character, you, you will see that you, you have no ministry. There will be no ministry for you. You don't have character. So, character is very important in the scheme of things. When it comes to God, you cannot dodge character. You can't tell God that I would like to serve you, but this thing, I cannot do it. No. There's no such place. You can never give the standards when it comes to God. That, look, I know I'm born again, so I'm saved in my spirit. You all know that we have three stages of salvation, and the salvation of the spirit, salvation of the soul, and of the body. And, and with your spirit, you, you did nothing about it. You are saved just by grace. And so you can, you can be saved even right now if, if you're a sinner. Just now, within some few seconds, you can be saved. But when it comes to the salvation of the soul, you would have to partner with the Holy Spirit, with God, in order to be able to bear fruit, in other words, to move into good works when it comes to the salvation of the soul. So the work that we are doing, the show, is at the foundation of our character. The discipline you need when it comes to character. Many people can display different character when it comes to, to, to themselves. People who are anointed in court, they are God-fearing, but any little thing, then you see that their self, their ego is coming. They become proud. Their self is, is coming into the, into the equation. And so God wants these things to stop. Character is something that we must take a closer look at. If not, we can never do anything for God. So, mountains are pride, see, and egos that must be dealt with before we, we can do anything for God. And so, 
let's go to Genesis 1.27. That he explained, he talked about creation versus formation. Creation versus formation. And in Matthew 1.27, that was when man was created. But if you move to Genesis 2, uh, from, uh, Genesis 2 from, let's start from 7 to 8. Move to Genesis 2, 7 to 8. See, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. So right from the Genesis 1.27, we saw that man was created just like that. God created man. But in Genesis 2.8, the Bible is saying that now God is forming man. And so there's a difference between creation and formation. But when it comes to formation, we saw that it was in aid of a work that God was giving to man. And so if, if you continue, let's continue. Let's continue. And the Lord God planted garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. So when God had an idea to put man in a garden, that at this point man will be a steward over a creation, a steward over something that belongs to me, at this point man must be formed. At this point, as soon as God will think of you and trusting something into your hand, you cannot just be a created person any way, anyhow, and you'll be put into, into God's industry. Once God is having you in mind, it means that there's a formation pattern that God will take you through. So no believer will dodge this. If you are aiming at doing anything for God, or if you are aiming at God using you, then the process of formation cannot be dodged. And this work is done in our souls. Formations are done in our souls. And so, you, you can be gifted. You can be created. Everything is alright. But if you don't have character, you can never be used of God. You can't be used of God. Hallelujah. So, that is in creation. But if you move on, you see in the life of Jacob, let's, let's read Isaiah 43 verse 1. How Jacob was created and at the same time Israel was formed. This, this one person, but we, we see the different facet of his ministry. But now, that says the Lord who created you, O Jacob. So, Jacob at this point was created, but, and he who formed you, O Israel, there's, there's a journey from creation to formation. From creation to formation, there's a journey. And that journey, that space, is a work that the Lord must do in your soul. You see, there are so many noises in our souls. There are so many noises. Egos. Proud. People are proud. That daddy, daddy said that you can be proud and you don't even know you are proud. But with this attitude, you can never do anything for God. You can't. And so, we have to take a look at it and know how best the Lord will help us to change our egos and disease from every pride that we are walking in. So, Jacob was created, but Israel was formed. If you look at the process, this was hard on the flesh. Because if you look at Jacob and how God used him, and if you look at how he transitioned, how he became Israel, you could see that it came about by a whole process. A whole process, a whole journey. It took years for the formation of Israel. But Jacob was just a creation. If possible, something just simple. But when it comes to how to be formed, it means that a lot of work. You have to be in tension. You have to collaborate. Cope with the Holy Spirit in order to come out best. If not, you are going nowhere. If not, you can never do anything for God. So, believers in the New Testament, the Bible is saying that we are... Let, let's read 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you see, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. 
behold, all things has become new. So let, let's, let's read uh, Galatians 4.19. So if, if you're a new creation, everything has passed away. And at this point, he spoke about the salvation of the spirit. That you can be born again within the spirit of a second. But when, when it comes to being formed, you can't just be used a day, a day to, to form or to finish every course when it comes to formation of your soul. So he said, my little children, for whom I labor in birth, again until Christ is formed in you. This is Paul speaking. And at this point, he's, he's laboring and praying. And the laboring here, not only in prayer, putting uh, teachings together, overseeing their lives, interceding for them, warfare will come in. Uh, everything will come in, making sure that the people that are created, that are born again, they will form a particular lifestyle. They will be formed in the patterns that God wants them to be formed. So this is a work that the apostle was doing for the church. And it stands to reason that every believer, every believer, there's a work that must be done in your soul. And before that work can be done, you must collaborate with the Holy Spirit in order to achieve that ideal nature that God wants every believer to walk in. Hallelujah. That, that is the beauty of your salvation. Because if you look at the stage of salvation... We spoke of uh, uh, your spirit being saved, your soul, and that of your body. Your spirit, you never contributed. And that of your body, you will not contribute. Because the Bible said that for all of us will not die, but we will change. So it means that the salvation of the body, you don't have a, a, a contribution in it. You don't have anything to do about it. You will just be changed. And so the work that we have now on our table is that we have to make sure that our souls synchronize with the work that is being done by the spirit and this is where the problem is hallelujah that will tell you that he said, there's no there's so much noise in the church because souls are not transformed because many people are doing in quote what we call church and they are not looking at building souls capacity building when it comes to souls so there are people who can pray for hours but they don't have character people who are anointed who can sing who can preach but when it comes to character they are deficient such people cannot give glory cannot bring any glory to god but that's what we are saying so the church is not working in its place we don't see the church working in that authority because we are deficient of grace we are deficient of grace. Our souls are at stake. The work that must be done in our spirit, uh, in our souls, we are not taking heed to it. So once I can, I can, I can fast. Once I can read and I can do all the spiritual things, I'm okay. Forget about my soul. So somebody will tell you things like me. This is how I am. You cannot change these things about me. Me, I, I can easily be offended. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in my family. That, that's, how, that's how we are. We see people building, fencing some of these, these soul defects. That in my family, everybody is like this. Meanwhile, the Bible is saying that these things are defects. That we must do our possible best to change them. Hallelujah. If not, we can never do anything for God. And so, we have to labor. We have to make sure that our souls are conforming to the deliverance of the Lord. The salvation that the Lord has given us. We have to be conscious, intentional, and make sure that our souls are responding. Because when it comes to things like pride and egos, God will never come and, and okay, let, let's, let's fast and pray about pride. As good as it is, it can never take away pride. We can make, we can declare fast against pride. But you see that this pride, it can be taken away when people decide to lay their garments. That's when pride can be taken away. Hallelujah. You, you see a born-again believer 
tongue speaking, so anointed. But if you try to tamper with his or her character, you will see that there's a lot of work. Oh, that, that is why you can come to church and this one is born again, tongue speaking, but you can put your phone there and somebody will take it away. Your phone will be gone in church. So unbelievers will say things like, ah, they, 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 they claim they are believers. You see, these are the noises coming from our souls. It's true they are born again. But the character they are exhibiting is not in line with what they proclaim they have. Because if you look at the treasure that we have, the blessing that the Lord has secured for us, and you look at how we portray, how we live our lives, you don't see a, a recourse. You don't see a connection with what we have in the spirit. You don't see it. But it's, it's unfortunate when, when you meet people, they, they will not see your salvation in the spirit. It's not about talking about it. When you meet people, what, what they will encounter first is what you will display. The way you talk, the mannerisms, the way you respond to things, your reactions. You are quick-tempered. You can't slap people in the way, anyhow. People don't even have measures when it comes to choosing their ways. That you are born again, so you are a pastor, so you can, you can be behind the pulpit and even insult. See, this is a noise coming from your soul. And, and people are, oh, uh, the person, uh, he's under the anointing. There's, there's one pastor like that, uh, in quote, a pastor. That he, he started insulting the, the keyboard guy. The, the, the guy said, ah, so you would take two hours to, to get a key for me to sing. He started insulting. You see, for you to be able to insult that thing, insult, to, to be able to open your mouth and bring those vulgar statements, those bad words, it means you're uncultured. It's not taught by the Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit who taught you that. It, it's not God. No. Separate what you are doing from what the Spirit is doing. Because there's a work that must be done in our souls. Hallelujah. And so, moving on, Moving on, we, we've seen how it's a big deal for us to be formed. So creation is not enough. We have to move on to be formed. Everybody must aim, decide that you will change every attitude that you believe that is not glorifying God. So that is spoke about ministry and soul structure. Ministry and soul structure. And I said that ministry is your service to God. So, when it comes to ministry, God will structure your soul. So, as we are here, there's, there's a part that we all play in the body of, of Christ. There's a ministry that we all have. There's a ministry of helps. Uh, not only the fivefold ministry, where you see people teaching people behind the pulpit and preaching and all that. There are ministries. There are helps. People that they've been called to offer help in the body of Christ. But you know, you can offer help in a defect way. Daddy, Daddy gave a scenario, for instance, that let's say you did something for somebody or you did something for a church and uh, there was a mistake that you were not acknowledged. So let's say, he said, let's say you are four people. So they mention A, uh, a name, B name, C. And you, the fourth person, the D, they, they forget to mention your name. You will see that now you are doing your service. But when they forgot about you, you became offended. You became offended. And this is something telling you that you have a problem in your heart. See, these things, no, no pastor can help you. We, you can never be prayed for. For certain issues you have, the defects you have in your souls to be corrected. You just have to align yourself with the Holy Spirit in order to change some of these things. If not, you can be anointed, you can be born again, and you still have problems in your soul. In your soul. 
in your soul. So the state of your soul is the main determinant of your spiritual maturity. So when we say somebody is matured in Christ, it's, it's not the tongues that the person speaks. It's not because he speaks big or wild or capital letters tongues or something. No. That is not it. It's not because he has seen a vision of Christ that every day he will see Christ. Every day angels will come in fellowship with the person. No. That's not what determines that you are matured. What determines you are matured is a growth in your soul. Is a growth in your soul. So at this point, you have to know that this is a big deal. It's a big deal. Because not until you grow in your soul, you are not matured in the things of God. We can't say you are matured. And so the salvation of soul is the second stage of salvation. And we must take note of this. The character of a person is directly linked to the progress he has made in salvation of the soul. So we can only say you have a good character when you are making progress when it comes to your soul. Paul, Paul, Paul said it in this way. He said that we should work, I think Philippians 2, 12 or so. He said that we should work our salvation with fear. G give, give it to me. I think Philippians 2, 12. Okay. So, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work at your own salvation with fear and trembling. So, salvation must be worked out. And these are issues about souls. Not about your spirit, not about your body. But when it comes to the salvation of your soul, you have to work it. No. Paul is telling the church that work it. Don't, don't agree and accept the state in which you are knowing that the character you are displaying is, 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 not, is not the best. That you can easily fight. Don't, don't claim that one. That is not your portion. That is not you. That you can easily be offended. That is not you. It's a sign that a work must be done. Something must be done about your soul. You are born again, but your soul is speaking loud. In such a way that we cannot even hear what your spirit is saying. Your soul can make nonsense even of, of, the, of, of the state of your spirit. Your soul can make nonsense of your salvation. That a man of God, you can easily destroy yourself by the things you display. That people and people say, and, and when you know, I was so a suffer. Only because your soul is making noise. Your soul is speaking so loud. And this can hinder your growth. So he said that work out your own salvation with fear. You see, the fear here means reverence to God. You see, acknowledging God, knowing that you need help, knowing that God, you have to help me at this point. God, I need help. God, help me to overcome this. God, I want to cooperate with you. This is an issue I have. God, help me with fear. And with trembling talks about the agency of it. You must know that this is a problem. The issue is, many people don't believe that these defects, they are, problem. they are problems. We don't believe that. And so, we, we fence it. Then we pocket it. Oh, it's okay. That's me. It's okay. That's fine. That, oh, I will change. That's fine. We don't see the agency of it. We don't see how important it is for us to change when it comes to our character. So, this person can finish preaching right now. Finish worshiping God. And right from here, if you dare crosses his or her path, you can be beaten. Oh, you can be beaten. There's something funny on, on social media where a pastor slapped one guy. He said that, do you want to use one hour to read just a simple quotation? He gave a scripture and this guy flipping the Bible, uh, he, he couldn't see the whole thing. 
If, if that, that pastor has to be here, but I know some of us are <laughs> giving us back and forth kind of slapping. Hallelujah. And this one is not anointing. Somebody say apostles are quick tempered. No. Apostles are not quick tempered. It's people with issues in their souls that are quick tempered. So you can be a pastor, you are quick tempered, a teacher, a prophet, quick tempered. Not apostles. Everybody can be quick tempered. You can easily be offended. Hallelujah. So that is the work on our table that we have to take note of because it's very important when it comes to our ministry, when it comes to God using us to achieve whatever he has for us. So character is the beginning of ministry. Character is the beginning of ministry because it is the first stage of fruit bearing. So that is saying that character is a beginning of ministry. So that is to say that if you don't have character, you don't have ministry. He didn't say anointing. He didn't say your giftings. He didn't say your endowments. He said character. If you have character, or if you can have character, that we can say that you you begin your ministry. But if you do not have character, we cannot say that you are doing well for God. We can't attest to that. You're on your own. We can't say you are doing ministry. And he said that it's the first stage of your fruit bearing. So we've been called to bear fruit. We've been called, we've been called to bear fruit according to Galatians 5.22. But the first stage what proves that you are bearing food is the fact that you have a character shaped. You have a good character. That's what's a sign. That's what shows that you are bearing food. So, so but, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against sight, there's no law. So, from here, you will see that. Go back from here, 22. You see that as a believer, you must have love in the first place, which is, which, which is the greatest, which is the foundation. So every believer must have love. You must have joy. That's, that's, that's the, what emanates from your spirit. Joy of the Lord. You must have peace with the Lord. You must have peace of yourself, with your surroundings. You must have long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, gentleness, and all that. If some of these things, or this thing that we've mentioned, if you have problems in any of these, these things we've mentioned, then you have a problem. Yes. Then you have a problem. If you cannot control yourself when people step on your toe, you have a problem. And that is to say that until that thing is corrected, you cannot be used of God. Because before long, you end up beating everybody the Lord will bring your way. Yes. Because you are a leader, but you cannot forgive. Just, just imagine that you are a mother, you are a parent, and you cannot just forgive your child stealing your one city. You cannot just forgive. You cannot take it. And at every point, you make a recourse. You point it to the person. Last four years, you stole one city. Then this one will grow. Ten years, say, you, you remember about 14 years ago. You see, you don't have a room in your heart even to forgive. You can't forgive people. That one is a problem. It's a problem that we must fight with all diligence. Hallelujah. You see, listen, listen, listen. You, you, you can do all the things. You can pray. I know you know how to pray by the grace of God. You've been taught how to pray and all that. But listen, you can pray the hours. You can fast throughout. But your character is stinking. It stinks. The way you do your things. It stinks. People, people cannot... That is, that is, people cannot just be around you and even crack a joke and be okay. How you have to be careful when it comes to choosing your words. So before, before you type a message, 
So you have to type, you delete. Now this, this word, it can easily put this person off. So sometimes I'm typing, I will type, I will read. So let me do some editing. You erase one of them. So I'm about to send you, no, let me, don't let me send that all because somebody may be offended. Yes, that, because it's happening. And that is if you are, not, you are also not typing nonsense. <laughs> You, 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 you may be typing nonsense. Hallelujah. Yeah, but but that 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 place where you are that people cannot be free around you is an issue. You cannot be a mother. You cannot father people. Somebody had received a prophecy. And in the prophecy, they told her that the Lord is making you a mother. And many people will come under you for them to be nurtured. So, this person, when she had this prophecy, she was like, many people come in under me to be nurtured. But she looked at herself and it was like, she can, she can accommodate nonsense. She can easily freak out. Like, if, if you dare step on her toe, you are dead. <laughs> so, I was there. Then she came, she said that, Bishop, there was a prophecy, but I want you to help me. So, so what is it? So the prophet said that the Lord is bringing many people. They are coming under me for me to nurture them. And the, the prophet said that you are a mother to many women. But staying with only two people, you are fighting them. They say you are a mother, but you cannot handle two people under you. Your roommates are making you fight every day. You do not have the levers to sustain and help them and to overlook and have some self-control that you want to talk about any word that is uttered. People can look at words without responding to them. Because, because yes, because your, your ego can tell you that, no, you have to respond to this. What the hell do you think you are? You, you cannot tell me these things and go scot free like that. Tell the person. When, when, I, when I was young, I was around, let's say, around 12 or, no, for around 14 years. And one guy, he beat my brother. There was a fight and my brother was beaten. So we were there. I was with my mother in the house. Then my brother came, the one who is after me. The guy was called Kofi Abrakwa. <laughs> he came, why? Why are you crying? He said, I've been beaten by Kofi. Before my mother would say anything, I said, let's go. Let me go and beat him some. <laughs> and I knew Kofi and I was deceived by my stage. I thought I, I, I could beat Kofi. <laughs> the when I got there, I met the mother. Then the, the woman said, ah, Abre, they call me Abre. <laughs> Abre, why? Say, Kofi, Abu, Minu, and Timi, Baba, Bunibi. The woman said, Kofi, Kofi, come. <laughs> so, I don't know why the woman did that. Maybe he wanted to, to, to put a stop to that attitude. So, Kofi came. Then the woman said, Kofi, Abre, so Baba, Bunibi, Timon, Kona, Mehwe. And I was beaten by the guy. <laughs> On top of what happened to my brother. You see, you, you, you just want to respond to issues rapidly. Rapidly. People don't even think about issues before they respond. They don't brood on them. As soon as they hear, they don't even take their time to think that, no, this person cannot do this. I ask someone, so do you also believe that he can do it? Oh, they are saying this, and this person came, and it's true. I said, okay, well, yeah, that, 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 that was what you heard. But I want to ask you now, have you known him for, for a while now? Do you also believe that this person can do this? The person was quiet. You see, it, it's like you don't believe, but they are saying, so you have to respond to it. So these things are things that cause our life to stink, even in the notice of God. That the way you portray your life, we don't even see the anointing. We don't see the beauty that you carry. Because the character is, is so loud. 
that your real self, the real transformation is not showing in the realms of the spirit. So your character can make nonsense of your state in the spirit. Your character can change everything about you. That people will see you and even though you are anointed, by your character will let them look down on you. Go look at you. As beautiful as you are, as anointed as you are, the way you talk alone will put people off. That's why even in a secular world, when, when people, they have business and they want people to be at the front desk, with wisdom, they look for people that have good, good kind of friendship with people. People that can receive people well. That is even in the world. So that they will not lose their customers. But you are losing customers because of your character. You will lose friendship. There was one, one man like that. That everybody that will, that, that will come around him, there's a problem. So one day I was like, look, everybody that comes around you, you have a problem. But I don't hear the people saying that you are a problem. But you see them as problems. Be careful. Look at it. You have this friend A. You had an issue. Friend number two, an issue. Number three, an issue. And it's happening like that. Whilst people are having uh, 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 friends and they are okay. They are cool. Let's say it maybe it's one or two. We can say that there's a problem. A genuine reason that we have to look at it. But you, everybody that comes around, you have a problem with the person. You have a problem indeed. There's a problem. Hallelujah. So let's look at that one. And, and that is a sign that we are growing. Daddy moved on to say that character refers to a person's moral nature. Character refers to your moral nature. But works refer to the expression he gives to the purpose and counsel of God through practical kingdom work. So your nature, your moral nature is very important. It plays a role when it comes to your character. He said first love refers to character disposition towards God, whilst your first works refer to the practical thing they did for the kingdom. So he said that you will see that if if your character is in shape, it will even affect the, the outplay of your work, how you do things for God. We spoke about discipleship. You see that you, you cannot disciple anyone. That is saying that this, this year we are going to enter into discipleship where we give somebody to you that nurture this person. Make sure this person is born again. But some people, they know that if they give them some people to nature, because of the inconsistencies in their character, there will be a problem. There will be a problem. Before long, you will come and say that, this is my sheep that daddy said, I should, I should disciple. Everything I say is like, oh, I know this one. Oh, I can answer. Oh, teacher, I know this one. This one, it was taught... Uh, 2014, this one told, then you see that yourself is coming. And very soon you even start sucking your, your disciple. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the church, the church will increase when that defect, when our character is shaped, where we can disciple people for God. That's, that's where the growth comes from. Because why is it that you, you can't take people to church? Oh, this one, this one is difficult. Because, for instance, if you are not open to people, you, you cannot friend people. You cannot, you cannot be a friend to people. So let's say, for instance, you, you are not th that type where you like friends. Oh, me, I'm always indoors. Uh, you see, I don't like talking to people. See, I always I have to like, separate myself from the world. See, there's no need to mingle, to go and associate with them. But you see, without that association... There's no way you will get people to disciple. And daddy said that there should be an, ins an, an insulation. Even though you associate yourself, but you have to make sure that you do that by insulating yourself so that they will not change you. So there can be an association, but then they cannot change your state. Hallelujah. So, without these practical things, there's no way we can be good disciples for God. So if you are amen to 
enter into service for God. Work on your character. Hallelujah. So why is character important? Why is character important to God? Why is character important to God? So God is putting premium on character. Why is God so busy and, and wanting to fix that defect? Why? God forms us into the right shape as vessels before he pours out his grace through us. So, right from here, we've seen that God uses us as vessels. And so, as a vessel, you must be cut to shape. You must be cut to shape. You must be washed. If, if you want to drink from any cup, you don't just take the cup and you just fetch the water and you are drinking. You have to make sure that, number one, it's your choice. You like the cup in the first place. Number two, it's clean. It's clean. So you pick the cup, you will clean the cup before you drink from it. That is, that is to human. The same thing applies to God. Before a vessel can be used, he will make sure that it has been purged. It has been worked upon. So a work will be done on you before you can be used of God. If not, you can be a vessel making noise and ministering and you are not known by God because you are not his vessel. You, you can be a vessel to people and not God. So there are many people, as ugly as they are in their character, people still like them. Why is God is saying that? Go away. People are like, hey, come to us. We like the way you do your things. Hallelujah. So, so you can be people can you can people can clap for you, people can can lift their hands for you. You are done well. Uh, you've done well. Oh, you are good. Oh, this is good and all that. But in 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 the sight of God, in the nostrils of God, that thing is not good in the sight of God. People can appreciate you, but if if you use that standard of God, the Lord will tell you that no, what you are doing, I'm not pleased with. I'm not pleased with. One man was ministering, a man of God. This one is a genuine man of God. And he was praying for people. And as he laid, he laid hands on them, they would fall under the anointing. So, he would, as the people pick, pick him back, they would pick him, he would lay hands, they would fall. One person, like, he would lay, so he would just enjoy the thing. Pa, pa. And he said that, after ministration, God, God told him that, no, you missed it. You missed it. And people were clapping. God, we've seen how the anointing is moving. Everybody is happy. Clapping for the man of God because, oh, he just lay hands. Oh, the person will fall. Bring it back. Another tie from the man of God. The person fall. And everybody's clapping. Hallelujah. Clapping. But God, God, in the closet, God told him that, no, you are wrong. So, a character you, you display in people, even in the sight of God, it can be stinking. God will tell you, no, you are missing it. This is not the point. This is not what I want you to do. What you are doing is wrong. So check it. Hallelujah. So let's, this thing that we are talking about, we, the standard must be the word of God and what God is saying. So you don't measure your character, the, the outplay of your life, by the standard shouldn't be that of men. That this one is like this. So if if me, I'm like this, it's okay. No. People are like, if pastors are even doing it, who am I? That you say, who, who am I? <laughs> who am I? Say, no, oh, pastors are missing it. Somebody, somebody was going to do his bad thing. He was going to propose to a girl. And the girl said, no, it's bad. We don't do that. And the girl said, come on. Even uh, pastors are doing it. What, what do you mean it's not, it's, it's, it's not a good thing? Pastors are doing it. If pastors are doing it, pastors are not your measure. They are not the standard. Hallelujah. So don't look at a man who is not following Christ, who is not depicting that nature of Christ and copy blindly. That's not loyalty. People copy everything. Hook, line, sinker, they imbibe, they swallow everything that they see in a man. That is wrong. 
You can do that if you see the man protected. You can do that if you see the man following Christ. So Christ, uh, Paul said that, look at me and learn, as I also make a recourse to God. So if, if there's no recourse to God, that man shouldn't be emulated. That man shouldn't be learned from. So don't copy blindly. Don't make men your standard. Don't make men your standard. Many, many people, we fix our gaze on men. So as we reach the level of men, we can't move any yonder. We cannot move any further. This one, it will cause God not to use you the way he wants to use you. Hallelujah. So the formation of vessel is a major work of the Holy Spirit. And it usually involves crashing. So let's, let's read Jeremiah 18 so that we can get it in context. Jeremiah 18, 1 to 6. Jeremiah 18, 1 to 6. Let's take in context. So the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the porter. So he made it again into another vessel. So the porter took the clay, but he's coming to make a vessel that will suit his purpose. Not, not a vessel you want to be. A vessel that will suit the purpose of the porter. So he made it again into another vessel. So you see the change in vessel. The change in shape. And so if you become born again, something must be shaped in you. Your soul must come in conformity with what God wants to achieve in you. The vessel must be remolded. So as it seemed good to the porter to make, continue. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I, can I, can I not do with you as this porter? Says the Lord. Look, as the clay is in the porter's hand, so are you in my hand. So God is in the business of making sure that that thing that you are prouding yourself with, it will be changed. God is busy seeking your attention to change that defect, that character. That little force trying to destroy the precious vine that you have. Because your character can make nonsense of the vine, of the treasure that you have. So the porter is collaborating with you, wanting to change it. And we must allow it. Hallelujah. We must allow it. Let's continue. Let's continue. Okay, to it. Okay, let's, let's read Romans 9.21. Romans 9.21. So... Does not the potter have power over the clay from the same lamb to make one vessel for honor and another for this honor? And so the potter, he has right over all of us. And the potter here is God. And he's the one molding us. Molding us with the word. We'll get there. How the word can mold us to become a suitable vessel unto the Lord. Because if, if you're a vessel you will see that there must be a crushing. There must be a molding and a remolding. Because if you become born again, there are many things you have to stop. You have to, there are so many things you have to deny. You cannot put a new wine in an old wine skin. So when you become born again, there must be a molding of a character. There must be a project. You see, an intentional, conscious effort to make sure that any character that causes you not to become the ideal person the Lord is looking for, you will desist. You will stop. You will change your ways. 
You invest prayers into it to make sure that this thing is a minus when it comes to my spiritual life. This thing is a weight that is pulling me down. It's a weight. I heard of a prophecy. This one I was there. That that somebody was quick tempered. This one was a woman. Quick tempered. And he left, she left the church, went to another church. And so there was a prophetic service. A prophet came and he called the woman. He said that woman, can I prophesy? He said, prophesy. Then he started speaking. He said that the Lord is saying that you do not belong here. This you don't and imagine you've come to a church, you call someone and say, You, you don't belong here. It hardly happens though, but this was something so genuine. Then the man said that, look, you have a problem, a temper problem, an issue with self-control. He said that God planted you in a church and decided to groom you and nurture you and shape you to give you to his servant to marry. And this was a church that they've just begun and this pastor bringing people on board and the man of God was not married. So God touching the heart of this woman to go to that church probably not probably was for her to marry the pastor. But God will wait and work on you and even work on the man of God till the right time before you can be presented to, to your husband. But in the church she was offended. By church members. And the woman became angry and she left. She left. So this living was not inspired by the Lord. She left because of ego. She left because she could not forgive. She left because there was no self-control. I can't handle this. And the prophet said that, look, because you left, You've also lost something so precious. And, and this man went into details by telling her that you, God was preparing you to become a suitable couple for the servant that, uh, uh, the servant that he was training. Or he, 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 like he, he brought on, on, on board. But he didn't have self-control. So he left. And so this is how... If we do not check our character, we can miss our destinies. You can miss it. And this one, look at it, this one. No amount of oil poured on your hair can reverse that. Because when they checked, the man of God, he has even married. Another one. And your ego will not even let you go back and go and say, oh, I left, so I've come back. You can't go back. Because as you are leaving, somebody is taking over. Eh? Sometimes you, you, the changeover, the one who can replace you is right by where you are, you are seated. So as, as you are making noise and priding yourself in the things you can do for God, wait and exit. So daddy gave a scenario. He said that he, he placed his hand on the puppet and said that Let's say this puppet is what is holding him. And he, he, he was talking about the church. He said, if you are this puppet, and you will think that, oh, if I remove myself, this person will fall. He said that if you have that mindset that as soon as I leave, the thing will destroy. As soon as you leave, God will provide a shortfall. Somebody will take over. So your soul can cause you to lose your destiny appointments. So character is the consistency of good fruit attained in a person as he progressively becomes like God. The good fruit. Take note of that one, the good fruit. It means you can exhibit a bad fruit. Hallelujah. Yes, you can, you can bring forth bad fruit. Bad fruit. People, people, you see, and, and we bless God for this. Do you know that it's very easy when people are around you, they can easily tell who you are. Maybe you, you decide not to mind them. 
But they can tell you the Charlie Adena Hoyen is bad. If you, are, if you have not received a friend like that, who, who is bold to tell you that, why did you do this? It means, it means you have a problem. Because you are not 100%. You, 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 can, you can veer it off. You can miss it. But you must have somebody else say, what you are doing, you didn't do well. That is bad. Don't do this again. And you have to receive that in good faith. Not to fight. Don't fight. When they give you medicine to drink, drink the medicine. Don't fight. Don't vomit. It will heal you. It will be bitter in your mouth, but in your belly it will be sweet. Hallelujah. When they are correcting the things you do, when they say that, we think you have to change this one. Don't say, please, 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 don't tell them, leave me alone. No, don't say that. If you are like that, it means that you don't mean business. You are not ready to be used of the Lord. You don't mean it. The Lord cannot use you any way, anyhow. There's a song that says, Famiye ni aope. And you see, Famiye ni aope, it can only be possible when you are cut to shame. No. If you're not in shame, forget it. You, when, when God spoke about Zadok and talking about priests, he said that there are some even priests that they are people's priests. They are preaching for the people, not for me. And so, it's so sad how you can be a pastor, you can be a man of God, and you are just for the people, you are not for God. That you cannot minister holy things to God. That when it comes to serious matters, the Lord will say, no. If, if I'm talking about something serious, this one, he cannot do it. This is sad. Hallelujah. So, let's put premium on character. Hallelujah. Let's read Hebrew 1, verse 1 to 3. Hebrew 1, verse 1 to 3. Where the word character emanates from. Let's, let's get it right. Hebrew, Hebrews 1. Verse 1 to 3. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, continue, has in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the words, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, the word here is the express image of his person. When, when, and this is the word acorn. Because you cannot exhibit and be the right representation of God when you are not cut to shape. You cannot do that. God cannot present you to his people and say that this is my person. Oh, you can, once I have this person here, everything's okay. Like God will say about Job. Like God testified by Jesus. He said, this is my beloved son. And before God can say such a word, it means that he has done all the checks because God protected his name. That you will not go and disgrace him. But before long, you say that you are, you are the ambassador to God, but you came and you are like, this is my father. I don't even understand what, what he's saying. A whole ambassador. You don't understand the language of your father. At the point you say that, oh, this my father is difficult. You are not an ambassador. For you not to understand the doctrines and the things of your kingdom, it means you are not an ambassador. You are not a rep. So, you can only rep God when you are cut into shape. And this work, it was done in the people that God used. You cannot take anything along. You cannot bring all your idols the things you've imbibed over the years by the things you saw around you and bring it to God. And you want us to receive you any way, anyhow, as you are receiving that way. No! One, one pastor was preaching and said that this year everybody will marry. And, and yes, amen. He said this year everybody will marry by fire, by tender. So one sister was standing there. Then he held a hand of a brother. And he said, Fame Kosa is Pastor said this be so take me like that. Fame Kosa. But but you cannot yet be for own Kosa. You must 
you must be the ideal person. You must be cut to size. You must be cut to shape. You must be suitable for the job. Before, you, when it comes to God, you don't learn on the job. Hallelujah. Get it? You don't learn on the job. You do not learn on the job. You learn before you are being placed in the job. So don't think that if my character, my character is upward, but you know, God use me anyway, anyhow. No, that is not God. That is for the people. People will crown you. People will applaud you. People will accept you. People will receive you. But God will not receive you if your character is, is not in shape. If there's a problem with your character, you can never be a mentor. God can never use you as a leader for people to look up to you before you destroy their eye. Because, you know, many people look up to leaders. Should I even say many people? Everybody that follows a commission looks up to the leader. So if you're a leader and you portray certain lifestyle, certain character that is not what you're supposed to portray, you see that people will copy blindly. The things you say, the things you teach will affect the people that you are mentoring, the people that comes under you. So God insists and wants us to walk in good character. So the Greek word for character, as Daddy said, is character. And from which we got the English word character. And it means engraving. Engraving. And under engraving, he took his time to explain. He said, engraving is the art. Is the art of a person or a thing that engraves. The art of forming designs by cutting. Forming designs by cutting. With corrosion. Yes, with corrosion by acids. A photographic process. The light process. On the surface of a metal plate. Block of a wood or the like. For all as for the purpose of taking off impression or printing or prints of. So the the character here is about engraving. That's 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 the meaning of the word character to engrave, to emboss, to 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 leave an indelible mark, to leave some to print something on a surface. So here we are saying that the character that God is, is making or God shaping us is he is embossing he's cutting us to the ideal vessel that he want he wants to achieve in us and if we talk of cutting then cutting we all know it involves blood because for God to cut your heart it means that blood will come out the engraving involves blood it means that character Building character capacity is a work. Building yourself when it comes to character is a work. Let's accept the fact that it's a work. It's difficult. And you can only do this when you allow the spirit. It's a work. So, once it's a work, then we have to be conscious and deliberate about it. You will never form any good character by just putting your character on auto, 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 autopilot. No. No. So you can be in a church for 50 years. You are the same. Last, last 10 years, you fought people. For the past 8 years, you've been fighting. Now, in New Year, you are still fighting. You cannot just Look at nonsense and let them go. When people insult you small, they insulted you small. You cannot just forgive. Somebody, let me say this, somebody came for camp meeting and this person, we, we gave a task that do this for us. Those days, before camp meeting, we, we do prepare, so we'll be here planning to take machines and all that some of us are at the kitchen trying to fix food and all that. So we said that you, 
We want to give you a task at the, at the campgrounds. Do this for us. People will be coming from their houses. So when they come, receive them. Usher them in and register them. So we were here. The person got there. And because of offense, we were here thinking that this person is, is replaced, like working for us. So we, we should concentrate and do the, the other stuff. For us to hear that he has taken bus back to the house. He's gone. So we called and said, why? He said, look. <laughs> the fact that we are registering people doesn't mean we are fools. Now people come and they talk to you just like that. You do this, they say this. So me, I, I'm, I'm in the house. <laughs> I'm talking about real issue. In the evening, before we left, some of us left the kitchen and all the other to go and see people have been registered. We went there and said, the one in charge is gone. <laughs> He's angry. He's angry. You can, you can leave any moment. You can decide not to come to church. Just like that. Just like that. Oh, so we call, uh, we've not been seeing you. Why? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bishop, you, you have to talk to your people. You see, we, we are not children like that. <laughs> uh, this, this one, I, I, I call somebody. <laughs> Following up on people. And, and someone, uh, he, uh, she claims that somebody spoke to her anyway now. But, and sometimes it's not even true. Say, no. When we come, yes, we are Are you getting it? Yeah, because it's not like I don't want to obey what you are saying, but this is the issue. But this person is trying to do this. And he, she had a whole to explain. This is the reason why I'm not coming again. Forget about it. Daddy is my father. I will follow online. But in the church, I'm not coming. Look at her. Daddy is your father. You have a problem. And you didn't report. Are you sure he's your father? Somebody offended you. And this one is a genuine concern. But you never reported. You just left. And you are now saying that he's your father. So I'll follow online. That's, that's not how we father people. If you have an issue, you go to him. This one is doing this. And so this is a family. So we have to solve this. That shows that you want peace. So when, when people report, when people report matters, when people report what is happening, it's not like they are gossiping. Some of them, they need peace. Say, so please, let's, let's talk to our brother, our sister. See, the way, the way she has been doing things is not good. See, let's try to rectify that. That person is wise. Because we are all trying to grow. So just, be, why, why do you think till date we are still in church? We are working ourselves. So we, we've not... We've not guaranteed anyone here that you receive only good character around. That everybody here is an angel. Daddy has never preached such a message. That everybody, everybody you met here is somebody who just came from heaven. So don't be afraid around people. Even if they insult you, it's an instruction from heaven. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't receive those things. That's not how we are taught. But we are being taught that day in and day out, we are being washed by the word. We are working on ourselves. So if you enter your half in your mind that there's a problem, we are all trying to get into that shape of Christ. Where we can exhibit that full portrait of Christ. That's the reason why we are all here. Hallelujah. That is why if you exempt yourself from believers, God, it means that you don't want to grow. You don't want to grow. You do not want to grow. When you are not learning, you do not want to grow. You don't, you, you don't want your, your soul to be transformed. You don't want to. You want to sit in that old you. In that your old nature. And, and that is bad. So that is engraving. So engraving requires cutting. Cutting. And this will be painful. To be painful on your heart. To be painful. You have to be disciplined in order to be able. But at the end he said that to to impress, to print, right, is, is the word is to print, emboss 
something, shape you. At the same time, it will also take something out, deprogram you of something. So the word, as it comes, it, it deprograms, it changes the ideas, the things you believed over the years. So after it has pulled down, now it will now build a new structure. It will now build the ideal nature of God on your character. Hallelujah. So this is what God is looking. This is what God wants to see developing in us. That the philosophies that you've learned from Facebook, from Instagram, from the people around you, from your society, that is not in conformity with the things of God. When you come, it's supposed to be pulled down. Then that nature of God to be embossed on you, to be engraved on you. This is what we call character formation. This is when you can grow. You don't let them lie side by side where you accommodate this aspect of you and now God also be on the other side. So you can make changes at any time that you can switch into the spirit, the side of God. And at a point, you can also switch to this side where when your ego comes, where people will see you, right? Somebody can tell you, let me close church and we'll see what will happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It means that they, 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 they have two, two natures. So, two things. They are exhibiting two things. So, now, I cannot portray this character, but you wait. When I put on this suit, then I will, I will deal with you. That one is evil. Somebody said, we are fasting and praying. Let's finish the fasting. <laughs> <laughs> we will draw a conclusion to this issue. Hallelujah. So that is character. It's a work that we must be serious about. So engraving involves cutting. When a design is engraved on a surface, it can be imprinted upon other surface, like tie and dye fabrics. So the process of engraving describes how God shapes us into his image. So you see the work. The reason why we are talking about this, that God wants us to, want to shape us into his image. So when, when it comes to that image, you cannot take anything there. You cannot take anything there. Because in the image of God, you, you, you will see that you can easily, you can easily destroy the name of God. You can easily taint the name of God. You can easily let people talk profane about God. Why? Because how can you be in the image of God and you are doing this? When people... You see, people can say that because of this person, I will not go to church. Okay. In our days, many people are lies. So many people, because of their, let's say, their ulterior motives. But if there's a genuine reason... That somebody will say, because of this sister or this brother, I'm not sure I can be in this church. That's a problem. That's a problem. People must look at you, the character you portray, and they will love to follow you. They will love to be with you. They love the way you do your things. People can look at your conduct, your moral conduct, the way you do your things, and they will love to be with you. Somebody he said, you have a sweet spirit. I like the way you do your things. Having preached yet, but you, you've not preached. You've not done any, any preaching, but I would like to be with you. I would like to follow you. This is a blessing that your conduct can speak to people even before you open your mouth. Before you say a word or two, your character is speaking. Oh, if you meet people, the first thing that will be introduced to the people. It's your character. It's your character. You don't believe that one? When you meet people, it's your character. The way you dress is good. But let's wait till the person speaks. Some people, as soon as they open their mouth, you see where they are coming from. You know the settings of their heart. You, you will know their knowledge base. You will see that this person, there's no character. 
Hallelujah. So, let's move on. Because you know, it's lengthy. Amen. So, all the critical areas God works on is to make sure we are adaptable and compatible with him. God wants to achieve meekness in us. Not only for the purposes of representing him well, but also because a meek person will be a pliable tool in the hand of the Lord. In the hand of the Lord. You see, when, when you see people that are of character, that have been trained by God, you see, people can be around them and, and you can be assured you can be okay around such people. People that have been consistent with God and worked team with God that their character has been worked on. When you come in their company, you will see that you've come around people. Like you've come around genuine people. So that is said that Jesus, even prostitutes, they can come to Jesus and they will not feel condemned, but they will be convicted. So, look at him, the embodiment of light. But his light, even though it was a big light, but that light was not, was not blinding the eye of the bad ones. <laughs> so, sometimes it's so funny. You, you can be born again. You can be a believer. And of course, you are born again. But your light can even be a nuisance. The light you are portraying, it can be a nuisance to people. That you are not just showing them the way, giving them the light, but you are throwing your light at them. You are blinding their vision. But I thought the work of light is to show people the way, give people access. But you, your light is causing people to run. Because when the light is so shining and it's, it's on your eye, you have to cover your face. So people are moving from you because of the way you are portraying your life. Hallelujah. And that should not be the case. It's a blessing to allow yourself to be worked on by God. It's a blessing how people come under you and because of having teamed up with the Holy Spirit, having received strength and grace, people come under you and they are okay. You, if, if you are Jesus, let's say you are Jesus, and this married uh, lady, it was believed that, because for the disciples to know that she's a prostitute, it means that she, she was an international kind of prostitute, because she was known. In our days, somebody will be doing one or two at the corner, you may not know him. Uh, her, yes. But this one was known. So like a professor in the thing, everybody, she's known by everybody that this one is a prostitute. To understand that when, when, when she even appears, people are like, hey, you too, what are you doing here? Because there are some people, when they enter some places, you are like, uh, you, who called you here? So disciples were making those, those comments. Seeing the woman there, and not just that he went straight to Jesus. It means that. It means that. Looking at the character. How Jesus carried himself. Even bad people. Sinners. Could come to him. And still feel not condemned. When the disciples would tell people. that, Hey. He's tired. Go. 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 The master is tired. He's resting. Go. Don't come here. We are not joking here. We are, please go. He's tired. Then you tell them. No. Don't stop them. If, 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 I, if I was a disciple, you know, I, I'll be offended. <laughs> we are trying to let you raise No, no, let them come. But that, that, that was a character he was portraying. That don't, don't let the light, the grace you have received, shun people away from me. Hallelujah. Let that same strength that you have received in me be a blessing to others also. Amen. So, God, God wants to achieve moral integrity not just because he's holy, but moral integrity will produce the kind of immunity. Immunity we must have for God to trust us with his goodness. And that is saying that 
moral integrity will produce immunity. 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 If, if you have integrity, and he said that integrity is, is let's say, your, your close lifestyle is the same that you portray outside. You see, you don't have two tongues. You, you, you are not like what you do on the other side is not the same as what you do on the other side. So, in the dark or in your closet, you are like this. But when you come into the light, then you put up a different character. You don't have integrity. That's hypocrisy. You have two tongues. You see, what, what is in your heart is not what you bring out. You are hypocrite. So, hypocrisy is when what you are saying conflicts what you have in your heart. That's what we call lies. So, you know in your heart that this person, you hate the person. But when you meet the person, oh, yeah, everything is fine. But in your heart, in your heart, right after laughing with the person, when you move an inch away, you are like, next time, if you, if you greet me again. You know, you, your heart, what you just portrayed, that's not what you have in your heart. That is hypocrisy. You don't have integrity yet. That you have a secret life. That you portray something else in the public. But in your secret, you don't have that light. And, and integrity is your immunity. So God is so enthused and wants us to, to, to be shaped when it comes to character because that is what will give you immunity. That will give you immunity. What do I be by immunity? You know, for instance, if, if you don't have good character, you can easily, you can easily, should I say, endanger your life. Yes. Because, for instance, even though you are anointed, you are born again, with that character, that grace cannot be sustained. It will take character to sustain everything that God has given you. So you have the gift, you have the blessing, you have the grace, but there's no character. So you don't have immunity. Anything can take you away. So integrity becomes immunity that sustains the very blessing you receive from God. So any believer with that character, any believer with that integrity, you lack immunity. You can easily be taken away by anything. Hallelujah. Everything can, can take you away. Because you don't have protection. Immunity is protection. Let's say you are, you are a believer. Then somebody... It happened to me when, when I started doing boat business. I had to learn so many things. I saw that if, if you are to respond to everybody, you get a problem. Sometimes you are driving. Then somebody can cross you like that as if the person is driving bicycle. And sometimes you, you just step on the brake and the people are like, driver, why? Then you also give it to the person. You just open your mouth and say, hey, hey, you, don't you think? So it happened. Then at the point I said, no. So after I've spoken, I've reacted towards what the person has done. Then I said, no. The people in the car, they are not TMI members. So they don't know me. They don't even know I'm a pastor doing both. So let's say I have church members at the back, the way we go for missions, and I'm the one driving. See, when we we're going to Nkari, somebody crossed me like that. I had to apply the brakes. I didn't, I didn't insult. Because church members were in the car. <laughs> you cannot insult. So I was like, no, no, this is bad. Because the thing comes just rapid, just like that. You, 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 you. But you just have to control yourself and keep quiet. That, that, that is, and, and you know, you can do that and you can be beaten. Oh, you don't know. You've not seen drivers fighting before. <laughs> it's because someone could not control. So, you insulted. And the person also trusted. Said, are you insulting me? Then he got out of the car. They started fighting. Somebody, somebody insulted one pastor. The, the pastor was in clerical like that. The, the pastor said that he was late to church. So, he was speeding. Then he crossed one guy. 
The guy started insulting. So it was traffic, so he stopped. When he stopped, then the guy drove to the other side. It was uh, uh, two lanes. Came to the other side and said, Sell your software when I be. And he said he became some way. So he was going to preach, but he had been sorted. He said, no, no, no. Even though I'm late, I have to take my time. Because you see, you don't have any immunity. You don't have any, any guidance. You don't have any protection. You can be tampered with. Anything can take you down. You can be beaten. You don't have immunity because you don't have integrity. So you can be imprisoned even though you are anointed. You can be imprisoned. Hallelujah. You can be in prison. You can be a believer and be behind the bars because you don't have immunity. Why? Because you don't have self-control. You claim you're a believer, but what is coming out, it doesn't show anything good. It's not good fruit. You are, you, you are, not, you are not portraying integrity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. That's how dangerous it is. How you can suffer, even though you are anointed, you can suffer for not being in shape. You can suffer. That your own character can break your life. Your own character. It can mess up your life. Daddy said that God can touch your character, right, to, to form your career. He can mess up your character in order to achieve your career, uh, in order to achieve, like, help you. Uh, mess up your career in order to form your character. So you can be busy thinking that this thing I'm doing is the thing. But God is saying that this thing rather destroys you. It will destroy you. So that thing will be tight. That ambition will be tight in order for a character because that is where your immunity is. That's what will help you. Hallelujah. So character is important in the scheme of things when it comes to God helping you to come up here. God helping you to become a better person. To be able to be good in service. Your character must be in shape. Hallelujah. Learn, cooperate with the spirit. Be conscious about it. And decide that you will, you will change your character. Hallelujah. Let me, let me run through fast because of time. So Jesus said, he does not cast, cast uh, spells before swine. It matters how set apart you are for his use. Very important. That he will not use you any way, anyhow, just like that. No, if there's any swine nature, any, any nature that looks like a swine, you cannot be used of God. That nature must be taken away. That he said that you, you cannot close your zip. You want to do women ministry. You come and say you have grace when it comes to handling women. But your track records are not good. You don't have good testimony. But you claim you are anointed. With time, you'll be destroyed. Because what you claim you have, you don't have character upholding it. It will take your character to uphold what you claim you have. So where's the character that's holding what the anointing you claim you have? You don't have it. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's go. So God wants us to live in peace with other people, not only because it will save us from trouble, but also because it is very because he's very mindful of his name. Yes. And he does not want us to soil his name. For his name's sake, God will not let his name be soiled because of uh, you that people will start insulting God. No. No. So he will check you. He will check you. For you to come and say, I'm a man of God. Oh, I was sent by God. Oh, I'm from God. I just came from God. God is saying this. But meanwhile, the things that you are saying, nothing proves that you yourself, you believe what you are saying. Your lifestyle is in contrast with what you are saying. You don't portray the things you share. You preach and you do otherwise. Nothing shows that that's where you are coming from. You are soiling the name of God. You are destroying the things you think you believe. God said that, no, you are destroying me instead. It's not like you are just being a bad person, but you are rather destroying the name of God. This, this is the agency. That's how we have to change because it's, it's not like, oh, me, I'm just bad. Oh, me, I cannot just change. No. You see, if you're thinking like that, it will mean, it, it will mean that 
the effect is, is only you. It's just that me now and I cannot change. But on the other side, even though you know you cannot change, but you will see that at the same time, you are also destroying the image of God. Because you claim to be a believer. You claim that you've been called by God. But the things you are doing, it doesn't prove that you, you are a man of God. It doesn't prove that you are born again. It, 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 it doesn't prove that you can even exhibit the things of God. Like, hey, so is she, it's not this one that was preaching like that. It's not the guy who can pray like that. And just within some few hours, he's doing this. And people are amazed because you can change at any time. You don't have character yet. Hallelujah. So it's important that we, we be of good character so that we can do the bidding of the Lord. So God wants us to walk with him till his nature is afflicted upon our souls. His nature is afflicted upon us. So let's read First Peter 1, 15 to 16. Because of that, I had to run. First Peter 1, 15 to 16. Okay. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. You see? So, the one who called you, he's holy. That's the, that's the image. That's the nature. And now we've been instructed that because of the calling that we've received, we too must be holy. You must be holy. Because the one who called you is holy. Hallelujah. So you cannot do otherwise because the Lord is holy and that nature must be achieved in you. Matthew 5, 48. Matthew 5, 48. The Bible said that we should be perfect because the one who called us is perfect. He's without blame. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. So when you hear people saying that <laughs> no one is perfect, people, people make all, form, all forms of excuses so that they can wallow in sin. They can, they can comfortably stay in a defect. People giving excuses so that they can have enough room to, to, to replicate what they are doing. Oh, no one is perfect. As often say you cry, no, no one is perfect. No! The perfection we are talking about here is possible. You are not perfect. That is why you are here. So that that nature must be embossed. That you walk in light and exhibit that perfect nature of Christ in you. Because, now, were you born again first? You were not born again before. So if you are born again now, it means that before you were not born again, but now you are born again. So you were not perfect, but now, if you want to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, you can be perfect. You can work it out. So there's nobody who can say, me, I cannot change. Me, I cannot change. It's only when you don't look at the problem, see the problem you have, and decide to make changes, that is the only point that you cannot change it. Because you can talk about your, your bloodline cases and issues. Very good. It's there. But even though it's there, if you see that it's there, you have to cooperate with the spirit to make things perfect. Is it pleasant to, to see your, 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 your father marry maybe 10 women? And when, when he was not in the scene, now 10 women are claiming a small property. You, this man, you didn't have money, but you married 10 women. And now you are dead. You've given birth to about 20 people, and they are fighting over two bedrooms. See the contention. And you've seen that this was something that was the problem it, it brought in your family, that you, 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 were, you were affected by that the issue, by the issue. That it was even your uncle who took care of you. So your father was not even there to cater for you. Your mom was not in place. But this same attitude that you saw your father portraying, jumping from one woman to the other, you too, you came into the scene, and now you, you are proposing to three girls at a time. Three girls at a time. And 
And, and you can, my father is a bad man. You are saying my father is a bad man. But now you are doing it. How can you propose to three girls at a time? I spoke to one guy like that. I said, look, Nico, we don't do that. Uh, oh, he's not here. <laughs> Say, Nico, we don't do that. And I'm not sure he's listening. <laughs> Nico, we don't do that. I was there, he called, he said, uh, so daddy, the, the other one, I, I said, which one? He said, the one I, I talked about, that one I, I've put, uh, I've stopped, but uh, this new one, I, I said, so, so this new one you are, you are telling me, when did you, so, oh, she has been there alongside with the other one. He said, no, look, we don't do that. You don't do that. Why, 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 why can you portray such a character? So you see that the, the thing, you've seen it, but you decided to put, uh, 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 like, close your ears on it. You don't want to work on it. You have to work. Make sure that that thing is removed. That thing is not there. Hallelujah. And daddy will tell you, maybe you saw, you saw an issue, a, a sickness, a disease in your bloodline. And this affected your, your granny, came to your mom, and now you are seeing symptoms of it. It's, that is not your life. But at this point, you must be conscious about it. That's what we are talking about. Because if it is in the bloodline, then it's in the soul. So once it's in the soul, it becomes spiritual. And you have to be conscious about it and deal with it. If not the same thing that affected them, it will jump on you. Hallelujah. Amen. If now you see that, those same cases, also coming, coming to us. So, no one is pe perfect. Simply means that if you don't have Christ, you can be in that state. But if you have Christ, just as he is, you collaborate with him, you are perfect. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's move on. Ephesians 5 verse 1. I uh, jump to 8. Um, the Bible said that we should imitate us of God. And Paul even said that we should, we should look at him and learn from him just as he is also learning from Christ. We, we have to imitate God. This is a serious thing. We have to imitate. We have to emulate. You have to learn from God. So why don't you just believe what the Bible is saying rather than making a, a recourse to some defects you have? So why, why don't you can't believe what the Bible has said raw like that? Somebody will say, this Bible, it, it can be playing too much. Are you sure you, 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 can, you can do this? No. Once the Lord has spoken it, it's true. And you can walk in it. Amen. So, uh, four areas where character formation in God, um, four areas where character for, uh, your character can be formed in God. There are four main areas of character formation in God. Four main areas. So, as we read um, um, Isaiah 40, the verse 3 coming, we saw um, the mountains to be brought low. We saw the valleys to be filled. Then we saw crooked paths to be made straight. Then we also saw rough places made smooth. And we are going to dwell here for, for the rest of the time. We are going to be here for the rest of the time. Because this, this point is very, very important. Very important. So, there are mountains and hills that must come down and there are valleys that must be filled. There are crooked places that must be made straight. Lastly, there are rough places that must be made smooth. So four things, four things when it comes to character formation in the area of our soul. There are four things that believers we must take heed to. And the first one that he spoke about is mountains to be brought low. And that was last week he talked about this one. That he said that mountains and hills. And by mountains he spoke about pride. By hills he spoke about ego. That this one can hinder your progress. And these things, he said that God himself, he frowns upon it. That if a man puts on pride, God will end up fighting the person. And this is so sad. That you, 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 go, to, you go and pray. So let's say we've come, we've come to pray. Then the prayer point is, we are praying against anything fighting our lives. And you, what is fighting you is God. 
So who will listen to that prayer? <laughs> you see, that's, that's, yes, that, that's how serious it is. That when a man puts on pride, God starts fighting the person. God comes into the scene. You don't respect. You don't respect. You, you, when you see people, because of your makeup, because of what you have, because of your constituent, because of something you've, you've made, like, like something you have, you don't respect people. You are proud in what you have. What you've acquired is making you proud. Your prowess, he may use the word, your prowess, the giftings, your talent, your grace, is making you proud. In, in Ecclesiastes 7.1, let's read. And in Ecclesiastes, the Bible said that good name is better than riches. If we talk of good name, we talk of character. That character is better than riches. Riches here is, is the gift, is the blessings of God. But even though it's the one that will bless, he's saying that the blessing that he's going to give you is not as important as the character or the formation that you have to form when it comes to his image. He gives you all things to enjoy freely. He can give everything. But he is not making a recourse to the gift, a recourse to the blessing. The Lord will bless you. Daddy said our father is, not, is, 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 is ready to bless us. Ready to cater for our needs. But to him, that is not the subject. The subject is that your character must resemble him. That is not an infidel. That everything that you need will be provided. But your character must be fixed. Hallelujah. So the good name, you must have it. Don't look at only the blessing. Don't look at it. That by the grace of God, you, you've been blessed of God. You have everything at your disposal. I think in, in Luke 12, okay, let me move on. You have everything at your disposal. We, let's read it. Luke 12. I guess Luke, Luke 12. Okay, Luke 12, 13. Let's read. You have to read this one. That you have everything at your... Okay. Then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide... You, you can tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Continue. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbiter over you? Continue. And he said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. So listen, you can have everything at your disposal, but that's not what consists of your life. That's not your life. That's not your life. Because we saw that your character can mess up your life. Your character can make nonsense of who you are in Christ. So it means that a man's life can consist of the kind of growth or character he portrays before God. Not what you have. Not the accolades. Not the things you've received. No, 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 no. Not your beauty. You are so beautiful. But even though you are beautiful, he gave you the blessing by saying that that blessing I gave you, but make sure that the, color, uh, the character is not omitted. You portray it. That your character will not take the place of your blessing. So what, what do we see? In our days, people are busy doing everything possible to earn the blessings of God. So somebody can pray 10 hours only to receive something from God. But how many people go for a retreat seeing that, no, the way, the way I do is bad. The way, the way I do my things is bad. How many people go for a retreat because of late I can't control myself? Let me declare some 21 days. But when it comes to, let's say, there's a job. There's a job opportunity. And only one slot is left. And about a thousand of people are competing with, with, uh, for, for, the, for the slot. You see a believer undergoing 31 days for the job opportunity. But when it comes to developing our souls, nobody will lift a prayer 
And sometimes it happens. Even check, check, check our prayer points. You be sincere and check your prayer points. That one of the last time you made a, you, you prayed, and you're like, God, I've seen that nowadays I insult easily. Let's let's be sincere. I've seen that when people are around me, I, 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 I easily become offended. I see that I can't laugh with people. When I see people, it's like I don't even appreciate people. You've seen that thing. But have you ever taken a course against it? Have you, have you asked God? Have you prayed about it? No. But for the blessing, you are busy claiming. But you have an upward character. Hallelujah. So, we have to make sure that we have a good character because the thing that we are claiming, that is, that, that is not where the show is. That is not where the life is. The life is in conformity with the character of Christ. That's where we receive life. Not in the blessing. With the blessing, you'll be blessed. Oh, the Lord will bless you. Hallelujah. For sure, the Lord will bless your life. But make sure that the blessing you are receiving, you have good character in support of it. If not, you can have the blessing, but your character will pull down the blessing. You don't believe that one. Your character can make nonsense of your blessing. Yes. One man was imprisoned. This is a rich man. True story. Rich man. Having everything. He doesn't pray about what you eat. What you eat, if you don't know what to eat tomorrow, that's when you pray. But if you have food stored, some prayer topics, it, it wouldn't come into your head that you are fasting for the next one month. Uh, how am I going to survive within the next one month? No, it's not your prayer topic. This man had money. But because of character, he raped a girl and he was imprisoned. Had a name. Everything, but he defiled himself by defying someone. And so all the things that, the blessings, in quote, even when it's from God, the blessings and everything that he had at his disposal, now, because of character, he's in prison. So your character can make nonsense of your blessing. So God can put blessing in your hand, but your character will come and take it away. Just like that. Just like that. Because you don't like people. So somebody that came, that this guy, he has nothing. This guy, he has nothing. And more or less, like you will see this girl to be uh, like, like, he's coming to even depend on you. So you are like, <laughs> me, I, I, I friend with people who have something. Many here for my mother. So you are choosing your friends. So you want rich people to friend with somebody who is going to date. So you have to date a rich, a rich, a rich man's uh, this thing. You have to get a rich man's daughter to, to date. These people, these girls that you date, they will come and ask for, can you send me a time? Can you send me credit and all that? It, it, it's, it's, it's a burden. So me, I'm looking for a rich, a rich, a rich man's uh, what and what to date. You see, if, if you do that, you see you are not designing. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Because that, that, that is not... The thing you must have character to design people and make sure that everybody around you you, ha you are in good terms with people that are around you. Amen. Let's continue. Let's continue. So, okay. So there are uh, there are crooked paths that must be made straight, and lastly there are rough places that must be made smooth. Yeah, and this reminds me of a scripture about John the Baptist in Isaiah 40 verse 3. That was what we read. That a scripture was talking about how God was going to create a pathway of righteousness. That's alignment between heaven and earth. Say that his people could experience his glory. His people could experience his glory. As God touches these four areas, an, an, an equilibrium is attained. That state of equilibrium is what character is all about. That God will brought mountains low and he will exalt every valley. And at this point, that is said that valleys 
to be filled refers to the voice in our soul that needs to be filled. This is a very serious area of character formation. The void in our lives is created by defects in our soul. And the defects are also created, are also created through unmet needs in our soul. Many people go through detours, plateaus, delays in their God-given destiny because of defects in the soul. This is how serious this soul business or developing your soul is. So, even as mountains must be brought low, God will also make sure that every valley is also filled. Every void is also filled. You have to measure up. Because you can also live and not live to standard. That one is also there. That you are living, but you are not living to standard. There are people who are even afraid of, this, of, of, their, of their destiny. People are afraid that they can't take anything for God. They are afraid. There's fear in them. God will exalt all those valleys. Right? And Daddy spoke about attention, deficiency, uh, talked about affection, talked about satisfaction, security, significance, bonding, and joy. That all these areas must be attended to. So the third point was crooked paths to be made straight. Crooked paths to be made straight. Crooked paths to make straight. And this talk about moral integrity. It addresses area, areas like sexual immorality, covetousness, integrity, faithfulness, taming of the tongue. Let's read Mark 7.15. Okay. Mark 7.15. Mark 7.15. Okay. There's nothing that enters a man from outside which can defy him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that can defy a man. So the Bible is saying that the thing that, put, that comes out of us is what can destroy us. Continue. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Continue. Let's go. When he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So he said to them, Are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him? Because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach. It means that the issues and all this that we are talking about, the noises, they are in our hearts. They emanate from our hearts. And is eliminated. That's purifying all foods. Continue. And he said, what comes out of a man, that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So look at it. So where the thing is emanating from, is, is coming from your heart. The, that same place where Christ he has taken a boat. That same region, that same place, that's where these evil things are also emanating from. So where is the place of Christ in your heart? So you see the conflict that the place where life is supposed to heal from, that death is also coming from that place. So you are die tongue. You are not of one source. You are exhibiting, exhibiting darkness at the same time exhibiting light as well. You are a confused person. Because what you claim you have is different from what you are exhibiting. So proceeded evil. Evil thoughts. Adulteries, fornications, murders. Continue. Theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness. An evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Then the last one. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. So, these kind of things, they can defile you. They can take away who you are in God. They can do that. So, sexual immorality destroys the body. It destroys it. Covetousness will also... You see... Because of covetousness, you can easily not like yourself. 
covetousness. It can cause you not to like the very self that you are. That you are never okay with with you. There are people like that that even the things that they do for themselves, <laughs> they are like, no, 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 I couldn't do my best. They don't like themselves. Why? Because they are always stretching to look at what people are doing. And they, they, they compare and they like what people are doing to what they are doing. And so, for instance, they have black. They are having some, okay, they have, let's say, a book, a black book. This one is having a red book. The same pages, the same leaf, the same content. They can easily say that even though I have it, but I don't like what I'm having. I like what you're having. That is covetousness. That your heart will be in things. When, when it starts working, you will think that you, you just want to crave for more and you want more. But at the end of it, you will see that it is affecting you because even what you wear, you don't even like what you wear. You like what people are wearing. So when you put on your dress, very nice as it is, you come and you see one, shash, acquire the kama. And you are like, you can easily put what you are wearing down in order to get what the person is wearing. That is covetousness. So subtle, but when it gets hold of you, it can destroy your life. Hallelujah. And this is a defect in our soul. And we have to refrain from these things. Covetousness. And integrity, as you spoke about, is hypocrisy. Proverbs 11, 3. Let's read it. Proverbs 11, 3. Okay. When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, okay, the integrity of the upright will guide them but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. You see, perverse. You see, when, when you, you are not okay with what you have, you begin to abuse it. And so perversion will set in. And you see that you don't have it because the very thing that is your constitution, you don't like it. But what is another man's own, that's what, that's what you like. And this can destroy your soul. And we have to also be faithful when it comes to crooked paths being made straight. Crooked paths being made straight. We have to be faithful. That's faithfulness. Galatians 5.22. Galatians 5.22. Faithfulness is required of every believer when it comes to achieving a good character. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. So every believer must exhibit this fruit. See, they are fruit at first. But as you move on, it becomes good works, good fruit. So like I said, these things, they grow. They must be exhibited. So he said it's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, uh, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Right? What again? Gentleness, self-control. Against such, there's no law. So, we are being admonished to walk in this faithfulness, in this goodness. Hallelujah. And under the crooked path, that he mentioned, taming of the tongue. Very important. Taming of the tongue. Taming of the tongue. Let's read James 1.26. Taming of the tongue. How you can bridle your tongue. How your tongue can can be controlled. If anyone among you think he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this one's, this one's religion is useless. Let's continue. Okay, alright. So let me stop there. So if you do not tame your tongue, you will see that the very thing that you believed in is useless because you, you cannot control anything. You cannot control. Unless they didn't see, you will comment. 
But you can't comment on everything. There are some things we don't comment on. There are some things we just watch, look at it, allow it go. You just look at it. So you don't comment on everything, Proverbs 18, 21. Not everything that you have to talk about. As a believer, you see that you're making mistakes. Let, let's read Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it, it is fruit. So at this point, we also see that your tongue can, can make a life. You can, you can use your tongue to kill potentials. You can use your tongue to kill potentials, to, to diminish people. You can use your, your tongue to cause people, people, you can render people powerless with your tongue. Sometimes you see people who, who are growing, who are coming up, but some people, they cannot just keep quiet and watch people grow. Somebody, why in a dressing? You, you saw the dressing, look at it and pass. <laughs> you, you, you cannot just look at somebody just like that without talking and pass. That as soon as you pass, you are, you see, you, you must, yes, you must be able to tame your tank. Hallelujah. It's very, very important. Because this thing that I'm talking about, you, if, if, if you don't learn these things, you can easily break the faith of people. Yes. Because, let's say, the thing is not evil, it's not death and life issue. That what he's doing is not going to kill him. Maybe he's learning. Watch him. Even if you're a leader, watch him. See if he's growing. If it's not, that is why you can point it to the person. Look, you can do one or two. You can do this. But you, you cannot just, just allow it. You will talk about it. You have to control yourself by taming your tongue. Hallelujah. And so the, la the last thing we'll talk about it's rough places made smooth. Rough places made smooth. And it covers areas of your friendship, growth with others, embracing, yeah, embracing the body, mentality, moving from independence to interdependence, wisdom for relationships, our friendship with our environment. This is very important. How we have to think bodily. Thinking bodily. So, rough places made smooth is talking about how the networks that we form as body of Christ, how we, we live with ourselves, the friendships, the relationships that we have here. Because sometimes you could see that even though you are born again, but you have a poor lifestyle when it comes to your, your relationship with people. You are poor in it. You are poor, you are down. But, but how can you be a good disciple, somebody aiming to help somebody, but you have a poor character when it comes to your, your relationship with the person? You cannot help. So you see that you cannot do anything for God because you are poor when it comes to your friendship with people. You are poor. You can't say, oh me, oh, so well, I don't know this, so I can just stay at my corner. Then you don't want to be a disciple yet. That is, if you don't want to be a disciple, then fine. But if you are aiming at, or if God, if God is going to use you to become a disciple, or if you're a disciple, then you have to check how you relate to one another. How you stay with people. Why, why are you not thinking bodily? The Bible said that to we or in Ephesians 4 said to we all come to the saving knowledge of Christ. So God, God is even thinking family. God is thinking bodily. God is thinking in a collective way. But you want to make fashions in the body. You want to bring divisions in the body. And these fashions, there can be, there can be fashions where, right, oh, these are my friends. There's nothing wrong with that. 
but a fashion where you have other, let me say, bylaws that governs your fashion. That is to say, oh, this group is the best. That if you are not in this society, then you are not part of those who are making it. Those fashions are evil. You can form a friendship. That one is fine. It doesn't mean you hate any other person. But to have a friendship and render others as nothing, that one is bad. Let's read Matthew 18, 1 to 9, and this will be our last scripture. The one of Jesus to believers concerning believers, their relationship. Matthew 18, 1 to 9. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So this is a question that came, that who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And listen, Jesus did not say, oh, no one, oh, no one, is, the, it, no one is the greatest. He took his time to answer that question. So let's read. Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, assuredly, I say to you, Unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Continue. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is giving the process through which someone can be great in the kingdom. So you can be great. But this is the course you have to take. That you have to come down and take the form of a child. Be like a child. If not, you cannot make it. So whoever receives one little child. Like this in my name receives me. Continue. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin. It will be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck. And he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Continue. Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come, but woe to, the, to that man by whom the offenses comes. Eight. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, this, this portion where we preach, physically is, is impossible. But Jesus, this is the process he gave the people that it will be better for you that in your aid of exhibiting, like trying to make rough places made smooth, our, our friendship, how we network with ourselves, it will be very good for you if you are going to disintegrate and destroy the body. If, if you have an upward lifestyle in such a way that you, when you come together, it will rather destroy the fellows. He's saying that it will, be, it, it will be good for you if your hand or foot, if, if that's what causes you to sin, said, cut it off. That will be good for you. And, and by hand here also talks about your endowments. The things you can do in, in a society, an organization, in, in a church setting, in a local church, the things you can do. You are blessed, you are gifted. So if that gift that he holds, if your spiritual prowess, like that he will say, if that is what causes you to be arrogant and makes you not respect people, then it's better for you to lose their gift than to cause people to miss the kingdom of God. This is how serious it is. That you think gift is everything. You think you are blessed. You think you are beautiful. You think you have everything. That, that is not the matter. The matter is even though you are blessed, but if that blessing... It can cause the church. It can destroy the church. Then it will be good for that thing to be sacrificed. For that gift to be sacrificed. For the church to be saved. For the brethren to be okay around you. That's how God put premium on your character. So he gives you blessing. But when it comes to character, he can tell you that. No, you can put the blessing down and look at your character, my friend. You are blessed, but be careful. You have everything, but be careful. Hallelujah. So, you, you cast it from you. It's better for you to enter life maimed rather than have two hands, two feet, but to be cast into the everlasting fire. Hallelujah. And so, God is entreating us 
to work on our character. Treat your character with all diligence. Don't joke it. Don't joke with it. Your character can put you at a place where you regret. If you do not take note of it and put it on autopilot, before you realize, you are saying things you know, ah, am I the one saying this? How, how did I get here? Because I thought these things, I, I, I've not said them before. This is not how I've used to be. Oh, I used to do this. Oh, so me is sorting. How, how did I get here? You can get there. If you put this course on autopilot and you want it to grow on its own, by the time you realize you are behaving funny, of which you didn't see the time you opened the door for, for that kind of aspect to enter your life. Hallelujah. Let's be on our feet even as we pray. We are going to pray. And the prayer we are praying is, Father, we surrender to you. We, we, we surrender ourselves to you as a porter. And we pray that you will mold us. You will mold, you will mold and shape us. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we are praying that the Lord will mold us. The Lord will help us to fix our character. The Lord will help us to eliminate every growth, everything emanating from our character that is not from him. We pray that the Lord will straighten every crooked path. The rough places, the Lord will help us. That the mountains and the hills will be brought low. That the valleys will be exalted in his presence. In the name of Jesus, pray that the Lord will do a work on your heart. That the Lord will do a work on you. In the name of Jesus. We are praying that we are yielding to the grace of God, the provision of the Holy Spirit, that a detailed work will be done in our heart, that we will not soil our life, we will not soil our walk with the Lord, that we will wrap the Lord in all diligence, that the Lord can entrust certain things into our hands, and he will be at peace that because of this man this can be done that the lord will not look at us and say that this one cannot do it but this one can do it we pray for mercy that the lord will find us worthy that the lord will shape our character so that we can be worthy to be emulated in the name of jesus somebody pray that let the lord do a work in our character in the name of jesus let our soul be faced by the lord in the name of jesus Thank you, Lord. We pray the last prayer for Ghana. We are praying that the Lord will cause every hidden work of the devil concerning this nation to be exposed. We pray that whatever the devil is cooking, whatever the devil is programming in the secret, the Lord will make nonsense of it. We are praying and we are declaring that as we are citizens of this nation, we have part in everything that happens in this nation so we declare that everything that the devil is doing we make nonsense of it everything that will cause um, the, the, the nation not to be stable we come against it in the name of jesus let's pray let's pray let's pray in the name of jesus we pray against bad people evil people that want to ascend into authority evil people that want to lead the nation people with bad agenda motives that want to use people to fulfill their selfish interests in the name of Jesus. We pray against them that the Avengers will not see the light of the day in the name of Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Thank you Lord. Thank you. So Father we thank you this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the teachings of your word. We thank you for 
the words you've given unto us. We pray that you continue to help us to walk just as you've asked us to walk. We pray that our souls will be dealt with. That just as your word came with all power and might, that the strength that we receive will walk in that might. In the name of Jesus, we are grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Okay, so let's let's uh, communion before. Okay, so let let's take our offering. Agora, are you there? Give us song. Let's take our offering. So you can also give through Momo. So on the screen you have um, we have our account details. He's the same guy who was there for you in the midnight hour. He's the same guy who was able to wipe your tears away. He's the same guy who was there in times of luck and war. He's the same guy. He's Jehovah, my great provider. Tell me why you've given up on God. Tell me why you've given up on Him. Tell me why you've given up on God. Hold on, change us on.
please, do we all have the communion? Everybody's having it. Okay. All right. So let's declare. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to come before the throne of grace. I present these emblems before you. The bread and the wine which stands for the body and the blood of Jesus. As I take the body of Jesus, I declare that I am part of his body, of his flesh and bones. I tap into all various representations of his body in the scripture. His body is the manna for my daily sustenance in the wilderness like the bread which Elijah ate I tap into the strength of the body of Jesus for stamina for the journey of life and destiny I declare that I have supernatural speed like Elijah I declare that death has no power over my body Like Elijah in the name of Jesus. I will run and not weary. I will walk and not faint. My youth is renewed. As that of the eagle. As I drink the blood. I tap into all the various representations of the blood in the scripture. I tap into the Passover blood. I smear the blood on the doorpost and the lentils of my life. And I declare that evil will pass over me. Death and all his family members, diseases, destruction, decline, deterrations, decimation, defeat and decrease shall all pass over me i tap into rahab's scarlet thread i bring all my family members and loved ones under this canopy of grace and i declare that just as rahab's scarlet thread saved members of her household so does the blood of Jesus cover me and my family members. I raise the banner of the blood of Jesus in warfare as my default ident identification. Mark in warfare. I project the speakings of the blood of Jesus. As my default response to any voice emanating from hell trying to gain entry into my life in the name of Jesus I tap into the first miracle of Jesus of turning water into wine and I declare that my water is turning into wine in the name of Jesus. My potentials are coming to fruition. I declare that every divine deposit in me is being perfected in Jesus' name. I take this communion with this household of faith acknowledging that I am only a part of the body. Continue. As a part of the body, I acknowledge that I've been planted in this vineyard for growth and increase. I tap into the flow of many rivers of living waters from the bellies of fellow believers. Even as my rivers are also flowing. 
I submit to the body of Christ. I love and respect the body. I am not a spiritual vagabond. I am not a spiritual orphan. I am covered, connected, and planted in Jesus' name. Amen. So you can take the bread, which is the body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for access. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. What are we saying to Bishop? Bishop, God bless you. Amen. We thank God for this afternoon. You're welcome to Touch World Ministries International. You're welcome to Touch World Ministries International. We are a family. We are the house of Judah, Joseph, and Asha. That is communion, fruitfulness, and the word. We are a missionary church family. We are rich disciple, equip, and release. Amen. Is there anyone worshiping with us for the first time today? Anyone worshiping with us for the first time today? Okay. So, we'll take this testimony which I'm reading. There, there was no name attached, so I'm reading it as it is. I'd like to thank God for his deliverance from a robbery attack on Tuesday around 3 a.m. It made me quite slow for a number of days because I've never experienced such before, but by his grace, I am feeling much better now. Thank you, Jesus. So we thank God for the life of this person that by God's grace is the person is doing better now. Amen. Please uh yes. Copies of the, the rooted the manual for discipleship are still available. We are all supposed to get copies. So if you don't have one, Eric is passing some through a copy is just twenty cities. We all must get one. So please if you don't have one Give him 20 CDs and he will give you a book. It's the man that we will be using for discipleship. So you must get one. Also, currently, this is the man that we are using for Bible studies. If you don't have one and then you want a copy, it's 15 CDs. You can see Elder Ima for a copy. It's 15 CDs. Yeah, my Bible study.